You know, sometimes you plant your broccoli or your cabbage or whatever, and suddenly they're all ready to harvest and you've got just like a, a whole abundance of them. G'day and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. When I started my garden, I, um, I got pretty excited and I planted rows and rows of the same vegetable. And then suddenly everything was ready to harvest. And I was stuck with like tons of carrots and tons of cabbages. And I didn't really know how to preserve stuff at that point. But I have since learned that. So on this video, I'm gonna share with you lots of different ways you can preserve your abundance. Preserving comes in a few different forms in my head. Freezing, drying, pickling, fermenting, and then jamming. And jamming is one of the things I'll do on this episode as well. I'm gonna show you how to make jam out of rhubarbs and berries and tamarillos, but I'm not gonna use sugar. Well, I'm gonna use honey instead and flax seeds. Delicious raspberries. Flax seeds can help thicken it up and honey gives it that sweetness. But you need to give a little bit less honey than you would normally give it sugar. But I made two batches, one with sugar and one with honey. It works. And I'm also gonna make some sauerkraut with some spices inside it on this video with cabbage. This is the exciting part is harvesting. Look at that beautiful broccoli head. I've got some other broccoli over there. See these little ones here? These little ones here have been just put in the ground and I haven't been feeding them any manure or any compost or anything like that. But see these ones here in the pot? I made all the soil in this pot myself, grown in my own homemade soil. You know, you can see how the work pays off. And so I'm gonna turn this broccoli into, what's this, ready? I'm gonna turn it into a beautiful jar of pickled vegetables. And you know, it's as easy as saying one, two, three. Take a little onion. And I'll take some of my carrots. Look at this funny little one. Oh, these are gonna look good in my pickle jar. You wanna come up? You wanna in your pickle jar? Little carrot comes up. Oh, okay. I'm going to go down to the creek and I'm going to get a stone or I'm going to get some stones kind of about this round and like flat and I'm going to use those to put on top of my sauerkraut so it keeps them underwater. And so welcome to the kitchen. So the rocks I've got here I got them down at the creek yesterday. So I've, I've given them a good scrub. And now I'll just put some boiling water on those as well. Okay, so like this. So it's always, it's really important to make sure everything's sterile when you're doing this. It's a good practice to keep things nice and clean. So what can I find up here? I'm gonna get some carrots. Take my broccoli. Save those berries for my jam later. Take a broccoli and I want some onions and garlic. And I'll take some of the beans here as well. Take that rhubarb for our jam. I reckon that's gonna be pretty close to filling up our bottle. So now it's time to prep the vegetables. And I'm gonna chop them all up and put them in this to that. All prepared and ready to put in our bottle. Okay, this doesn't have to be complicated. And it's not complicated. Um, these beautiful chilies I got out of the freezer because um, freezing is another way you can preserve. In the freezer we've got bananas, bananas, all this is bananas, all this is bananas. We've got corn, bananas, cassava, bananas, chili, bananas. When my garden was two years old, I bought, I, we bought a deep freezer because it's a really good way of preserving as well. A few chilies in there to give it a bit of spice. Yeah, I'll wash the vegetables and then weigh them. So take 1.5% of the weight of the vegetables 
in salt. So I've got 881 grams of vegetables. And if I do my math correct, then this is about 13.2 grams of salt. And it's Himalayan salt too. No, no other additives in it. So I'm gonna mix the salt in the warm water. And you know, I love chili, so I'm just gonna spice it up a bit. I'm just gonna put a teaspoon or a tablespoon of chili powder in there. So I've got a few frozen chilies and a few dried chilies because dehydrating is another way you can preserve food. I mean, I freeze my bananas and I freeze my chilies, but I also dehydrate my bananas and I dehydrate my chilies. When I finish this, I'm gonna take all the tops of all the onions and I'm gonna chop them up and I'm gonna dehydrate those. Alrighty, then we just stuff our jar. This is the creative part. A bit more broccoli, another carrot. Took a carrot down this side. Onions, oh, I'm getting my red cabbage in there. Need a bit of red cabbage brighten up the day. Oh, and a few beans, another chili, carrots. So we're getting close now to top because we want to leave room for the stone as well. Probably put a bit more in the top there, a bit of this. So you want to press it down nice and tight. And then I'm going to mix these two liquids in if I add these two together. So that's my vinegar and my warm water and my chili powder. You can see the last thing I'm going to do I'm going to get my stones out of the hot water here. See if I can get a nice big one to put on top. There we go. That'll stop anything coming up. Maybe a little, a little one down the side. There we go. A little one down the side. Because I want to keep everything under the liquid. Because that's where you get the problem. Anything that's connected with the air, it's going to get fungus on it. So you want to make sure it's all covered up with liquid. And if you do that, if you do that, then it's going to be good. I've got a lot more chili, chili sauce in here. Okay, well, that's as simple as it is. Close it up like that, and then that'll be ready. If you chop it up small in smaller pieces, you, it's ready in like four days or a week. But these pieces are a bit bigger, so it might take a month or so before it's, it's pickled all the way through. But you can start eating from this in, in a week's time. It tastes delicious. And I'm gonna make one with just onions, because pickled onions is my favorite. And the rest of them, I'm gonna dry these out. So I'm gonna separate these. These ones I'm gonna pickle, and these ones I'm gonna dry. So I'm just gonna make two bottles with only pickled onions. Well, we're pickled spring onions, really. And um, got some stones. One thing that's uh, I think pretty important and that is with metal lids, I think the metal lids they go into rust uh, after a year. So using plastic lids is probably better. But I've only got these ones so I'm going to just use these ones. These are delicious in salads and the soups. I'm gonna put them in the cupboard as well. A, a good tip while I'm on the subject of drying, when you're drying beans and things like that, make sure they're totally dry. Either sun dry or in a dehydrator at a low temperature like 30 degrees. They wanna to be totally dry before you put them in the bottle, otherwise they will go moldy. So what's this thing here? 24th of September, 2022, 3% salt sauerkraut. This one I made, well, it's actually almost a year old, isn't it? It started looking like that, and now it looks like this. I'm gonna show you something pretty important about this, actually, before I start off, uh, and that is that it's got some fungus growing on the top. You see that? That is bad. So in this video, I'll show you how to do it so it doesn't get like that. I'll put some boiling water in these bottles 
and the lids. So I'm just going to run boiling water around so the water runs all around the inside of the bottle and around the lid. It's very important that everything's very sterile when we're making sauerkraut. Make sure you give your hands a good clean, give them a good scrub, clean all your garden nails. Very important to make things very, very sterile. To a certain degree, one thing you've got to remember is that the fact that everything's coming down underneath lactobacillus water and salt, not a lot of stuff's going to survive in there, if anything, and that's the point. But it's good to have everything nice and clean to start with. When we put our sauerkraut into the bottle, the fermenting process is going to create a gas, and that gas wants to escape. So we need a little breathing hole in our bottle. And the way I do it, instead of buying all those expensive air locks, all you need to get is a little nail, and a little hammer. You put your little nail in the middle and you hit it with your little hammer and make a little hole in the top of the lid. And then you get some of this micro pore tape. So this micro pore tape is like a breathable tape. Cut a little piece of that. And then just put it over the top of the hole. And then you've got a little hole where nothing can get in, no bacteria, no fungus, nothing can get in, but the air can get out. So that's our little preserving bottle all ready to go. See, you can also use it as a little label and write the date. I've got a little bit of purple cabbage here that's gonna add a little bit of color to it. I'm gonna save one of these. I'm gonna save that for later. I don't wanna chop it up into tiny pieces. I wanna kinda of just have it into strips and I'm just gonna sprinkle the rest of the salt on this and mix it in a bit and then I'm going to let it sit for a little while so it can sweat and release all its juices and come back in a little while. Okay. Press this, try and squeeze the water out. I think I'm going to put these into two separate bowls. All right, I'm getting stressed out with these stupid little gloves, everybody. And I'm going to take them off, I'm going to chuck them and I'm going to explain, I'm going to wash my hands with soap and scrub them. And I'm gonna keep doing this without my gloves on because I can't stay in the gloves. And the bacteria that are on my hands that come in this, that come down underneath the salt water and start having to fight against the lactobacillus bacteria, they're not gonna have a chance anyway. So I'm gonna wash my hands oh, so I can feel what I'm doing. That's much better. It's gonna take a while. You gotta kinda of give it a good old massage. So as this is not gonna be a four hour long video, I'm gonna just cut here and um, let it soak and I'm gonna squish it up and I'll get back to you in a couple of seconds. See, that's getting nice and juicy, check it out. Oh. See now, that's what we want. We want that juiciness of it. Alrighty, this is fun. Having fun in the kitchen, making a mess. Getting towards the end of it, not the little massage. <sighs> Okay, oh yeah. So you want it to taste a little bit like salt water as if you're taking your cabbage and you've dipped it in the ocean. Mm. Tell you what, going from 2% salt, I think I'm gonna lift it up and go at 2.5%. The recommended was 3%, but I think it's a little bit too salty. So I'm gonna bring it back a bit. So I'll give it 2.5% salt. So I'll just give it a little pinch of salt. I think, I reckon two pinches and I'm happy. I'm gonna just give that a little massage in. So I've added a little bit more extra salt. Let's have a taste of it now. Mm. I'm gonna give each of them 
a little sprinkle of peppercorns, a tablespoon of raw sugar. Usually you'd use caraway seeds by making sauerkraut, but I don't have any caraway seeds, but I've got some cumin seeds, or well, some ground cumin seeds. So I'm just gonna put a little sprinkle, like a pinch, in each of those. And then I've got some dried chives. I reckon I'll give them a little handful each. Turn this around a bit. So this is an extra little thing uh, that I've never seen done before, but I'm gonna try and do it. And that is that inside here I've got some lactobacillus bacteria. Already in our cabbage, we already have some lactobacillus crawling around in there. So we're basically just gonna give it a kickstart by putting a new little colony of, um, of lactobacillus bacteria in the cabbage. But we don't want it to put too much because we don't want it to taste like whey. So I'm just gonna take a little bit, a teaspoon, like that, and then another teaspoon in this one. And they're the little bacteria that are gonna turn this into sauerkraut. And they're the ones that are great for our digestion. They're the ones that are great for our stomach. They're the ones that are gonna help preserve this food in our cupboard, the little lactobacillus bacteria. The stones were boiled. So now it's time to put it in the bottle. So fill up the jar. You wanna squash it out so you're getting all all the air pockets out. You don't want any air pockets in there. Because the air pockets, they become aerobic. And you get all sorts of mold and stuff growing inside. So we want to make the whole thing nice and airtight. But I'm going to put some water in it at the end. And then, remember this one I saved from before? I need this one. I'm going to cut it in half. Like so. And then I'm going to put this down here to cover all those little tiny ones. That'll kind of keep that down, but then what'll keep that down also is the stone. Our river rock. All right, next thing to do is just to put a little bit more water in there until it's totally submerged in water. And I'll use hot water. I'm gonna just go through and get all these bubbles out. I'll press down and make sure all the bubbles come out. That's how you do it. I'll put that in the cupboard. Now it's the time to make the jam. It's really important when you're making um, jam to make, to make sure when you pick the fruit to pick the nice ripe fruits. The ones that are nice and sweet and full of sugar. So I'm ghana use the apple because the apple skin's got pectin. Rhubarb doesn't have that much pectin in it. So by using the apple, and using the skin in the apple, I get the pectin in. I'm actually gonna try and do a little experiment. I'm gonna make some jam today using sugar, and I'm gonna try and make some using honey. So I'll make two different batches. So this is 380 grams of fruit. And now I want 380 grams of sugar. It's a lot of sugar, isn't it? But that's what it is. It's like a cup full of fruit and a cup full of sugar. I'm just gonna chop these little, chop my fruit up into little jam pieces. Slow heat now. I want those fruit pieces to be a little bit softer. So I'm just gonna let that cook for 20 minutes. I'm not gonna put a lid on this because I want it to you know, evaporate that liquid out. That'll make it more firm. And make sure you don't let it burn on the bottom. So while the other batch is brewing over there on the stove, I'm gonna try and do one with honey this time, just using honey from the weedy garden, of course. So to start off, I'll just weigh how much fruit I've got. So I've got 357 grams of fruit, and I don't want as much honey as I use the sugar, so I'm gonna use about seven eighths. So 357 grams of fruit means exactly no, yeah, that's about right. That'll be close enough. So I'll put the honey in here and I, okay, I did a little bit more than 312, but what's gonna be left in the bowl? That's gonna be the difference. Okay, so I'll leave this here and in the meantime, the other jam is ready. 
So I'm just going to ladle it up. So I'm going to put this in my jar while it's hot and that'll also sterilise the jar. I'll just put the jam in the jar and because I want to sterilise the lid as well, I'm going to just turn it upside down and let it sit upside down for a little while and that'll sterilise the top of the jar as well. Out, out. I'm going to use now my mixture with just honey and to make it a bit thick, I'm going to try putting flax seeds in to see if I can use the flax seeds to thicken it a bit up. The thought of all this just is coming from my garden. It's so delightful. Alrighty, so I'm going to pop this on the heat. Okay. See, flax seeds, superfood. I'm just going to probably take, oh, just under a tablespoon full. You can use chia seeds. I don't have any chia seeds, so I'm trying to use flax seeds. See, that looks nice. That's a bit thickened up now. So I think that's ready. I'll jar it up. So I'm going to put this straight in the bottle while it's hot. Looks pretty good. in the bowl here after my hard work okay so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something and as a little nice little ending I'm gonna do a taste test of these two jams to see if I can um, taste the difference we can have a look at them and see the difference this one is the honey jam it looks pretty pretty solid and it looks pretty solid look see you can see I'm gonna take a taste of that one <laughs> mm. absolutely delicious absolutely delicious and I can't really taste the honey to be honest raisins would be nice in this Well, that's with the sugar. So that's more gluey. More gluey. I wouldn't say it's more sweet. It tastes a little bit, I don't know. I think I like this one here with the flax seeds and the honey. That's what I reckon. But anyway, that's it for this video. Lots of little ideas and tips for preserving. Be creative. Enjoy your food. Enjoy your gardens. Enjoy your lives. And I'll see you on the next video. Oh, and thanks for watching. Mm. Oh, I like this jam. I could eat this jam for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs>